A very dangerous storm system is coming to the United States over the next few days, and this will bring the threat of major severe weather outbreaks, including the risk of significant damaging winds, destructive hail, and strong to potentially long track tornadoes. So in today's forecast, we are going to break down exactly what you need to know about the weather that will be impacting the United States over the next seven days. And we'll begin with what's happening across the country today, and we've had a bunch of severe weather over the last 48 hours, including a major tornado outbreak across the Ohio. Valley, and unfortunately, we've at least had 33 fatalities from this tornado outbreak, one of the deadliest tornado outbreaks that we've had in the last five years. The last time we had anything near that was back in 2021 on the day that the Mayfield, Kentucky tornado happened. So unfortunately, that has happened. We've also had a bunch of EF3 plus tornadoes now confirmed across the Ohio Valley. We'll have more detailed posts on our Twitter and Facebook pages at Max Velocity WX going over all of those different tornadoes. But we also have had some severe weather even over the last 24 hours back over in the southern plains which is now starting to move out and as a large storm system moves over the Rockies we are anticipating a big severe weather event which will kick off today it'll really ramp up tomorrow and it will continue into Tuesday it'll begin in the central and southern plains but it will eventually move towards the Mississippi River Valley back over into the Midwest and the Ohio Valley as we go over the next few days now let's talk more about the severe weather potential for the next few days and it'll begin with today which the Storm Prediction Center has two different enhanced risks of severe weather in place, one of which is in Nebraska, Colorado, and northwest Kansas, and then another one centered right across central and northern Oklahoma and a large chunk of Kansas. Slight risk goes all the way back through north Texas and even central Texas, and a marginal threat extends back towards the east coast. Now, all hazards of severe weather are on the table today, including the threat of at least some scattered damaging winds across the central and southern plains, but large to very large hail will be one of the biggest concerns for today, especially across Kansas, Oklahoma, and Nebraska, where we could actually see hail as large as the size of softballs today. And we ended up having a couple of storms last night in Oklahoma that produced softball-sized hail, one of which was just east of Oklahoma City around 7 to 8 o'clock. We could actually see that happen again today across these same exact areas, maybe even as far south as the Dallas-Fort Worth area back over in central Texas. And then our tornado risk has a high ceiling, but I do want to mention that right now the Storm Prediction Center has maintained a somewhat conservative forecast, and it's going to highly depend on how many discrete supercells that we have fired firing off along our dry line later this afternoon. If we have multiple, we could be talking about a significant tornado outbreak across parts of the central and southern plains. But on the other hand, if we have a lot of convection out there in the morning that kind of sits and kind of stabilizes the atmosphere, this could struggle a little bit. So there's definitely a high ceiling to today's event. We could have a bunch of tornadoes. We could also have a low floor where there's basically only maybe one or two tornadoes at most. But no matter what happens, there is a risk for strong and even long track tornadoes today. And if confidence grows, the Storm Prediction Center could up upgrade our risk to include a larger area, maybe even a moderate risk of tornadoes could still be in play. It's just going to depend on the confidence here of how many supercells we're going to have and if storms are actually going to initiate. So make sure that you have multiple ways to receive alerts, have a tornado action plan ready to go, and make sure you're subscribed to the channel because we'll be live later today covering this threat of a potential tornado outbreak in the central and southern plains. And then as we end to Monday, the risk of severe weather could even be higher across the central and southern plains where a major severe weather outbreak appears possible with all hazards of severe weather on the table. Right now, we have a large enhanced risk of severe weather in place that covers almost 10 million people, anywhere from Kansas City back towards Dallas, Fort Worth. A slight risk of severe weather is also in place, which includes anywhere from Texas to Iowa, and a marginal threat, which extends all the way back down into the southeast and also as far north as South Dakota. Right now, the main concerns for Monday will be damaging winds, which should be scattered to numerous across all of these different states. Large to very large hail is also a big concern, and I would not be surprised if the storm Prediction Center introduces higher probabilities for both hail and as well as tornadoes on Monday. I do think a moderate to even maybe high risk of severe weather is in play. It's just going to depend on storm mode and exactly when storms fire up. All that stuff is still to be determined as of right now. Our tornado risk for right now is a very large 10% hatch tornado risk. And honestly, this is one of the largest 10% hatch tornado risks that I've seen in quite some time. It covers a large area. So make sure that you have multiple ways to receive alerts, have a tornado action plan ready to go for Monday. And again, we'll be live covering this in depth pretty much all day. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel. And then as we head into Tuesday, our risk of severe weather will continue to remain elevated. We have another enhanced risk of severe weather for Tennessee, Mississippi, and Alabama. Slight risk from the Ohio Valley back into the deep south and marginal threat back towards the mid-Atlantic where large hail, damaging winds, and a few tornadoes will all be possible. I don't think we're going to be talking about a full-fledged tornado outbreak on Tuesday per se, but I do think very large hail and damaging winds are the greatest concern 
concerns. Still wouldn't rule out a strong tornado somewhere in this area, but I do think the tornado risk will be lower compared to both Sunday and Monday. So our tornado threat for today is expected to be very elevated, and these are our significant tornado parameter values, which basically gives us an idea of how favorable our environment is for tornadoes with a bunch of different ingredients. And the big thing for today is when storms initiate. If they wait until about 5, 6, 7 o'clock, they are going to be working with a very favorable environment for strong to potentially long track tornadoes. Here's the thing, though. If storms initiate earlier in the day, let's just say around 12, 1, 2 o'clock, you'll notice our environment is way less favorable, even though we could still see a tornado threat of really long track tornadoes so if storms are able to delay enough with the cap that we have in place during the morning and early afternoon it could easily be a significant day here of severe weather across the central and southern plains and these significant tornado parameter values are honestly almost maxed out across many areas in kansas and oklahoma so that is definitely concerning with our environment for today so here's the timing for today beginning with the southern plains which we will have a dry line in place and if any storms initiate during the early afternoon there will be a threat of all hazards of severe weather but i think storms will likely wait until about four five six o'clock to fire off near our dry line and the main concern will be across areas like western oklahoma and also north texas keep in mind that there will be a cap in place so it's going to take a little bit for these storms to get going i think but once they get going that could be a big problem including damaging winds very large hail and the threat for a tornado or two even down here in north texas we could see a couple storms that cause big problems i think the biggest concern though right now for north texas today will actually be very large hail rather than a tornado threat even if if we have discrete supercells because the environment down here is just not nearly as favorable for tornadoes but nonetheless i think things will be pretty active down here during the late afternoon and early evening and then storms will likely fizzle off as we go into the late evening and overnight hours back over in oklahoma this is a bit of a 50 50 right now we could see a storm initiate right along our dry line it also could be very quiet here it's just going to depend again on storm initiation right along that dry line i think there will be enough forcing for at least one storm somewhere in western oklahoma now it's a bit of a different story if you're back up in Kansas. Kansas or Nebraska or even Colorado, the HRRR is showing a load of supercells forming right around 4 to 5 o'clock, and these would explode, producing very large hail, damaging winds, and the threat for tornadoes. It also shows a slew of storms back over in northwest Kansas and southwest Nebraska. I think the biggest concern with these will be very large hail. Since the moisture is going to be lower, it will be harder for these to produce a tornado, but if one were to develop, it will likely be photogenic, so definitely something to keep an eye on out there. By around 7 to 8 o'clock tonight, these storms will continue to push east the ones in nebraska weaken the ones in kansas will remain intense probably all the way until kansas city where hail and wind will be the main concern i would expect these storms to arrive sometime around midnight tonight and then eventually into the early morning the storms are moving towards st louis where there'll be weaker and more just strong storms rather than anything also this is a different model run from the h triple r and it does show that there could be a supercell or two back over in oklahoma sometime during the late afternoon hour so again keep that in mind this is still a projection it's not exactly what's going to happen today, but it at least gives you an idea of what could happen. And there are multiple scenarios with today, but no matter what scenario pans out, I still think very large hail is likely with any supercells that develop. And we could see a few strong and perhaps even long track tornadoes if storms initiate later in the day. And if we actually have enough forcing near that dry line. And then as we head into Monday, our tornado threat could even be higher than what it is today, but it's going to depend on storm mode and also when storms fire off. And if we have any sort of morning convection, just just like today, the significant tornado parameter values don't really increase or ramp up until around 6, 7, 8 o'clock, where they really get high across areas like Kansas City, back into eastern Oklahoma, and western Arkansas. But notice how the values are way lower out in front of this area, and the reason why is because the HRRR model, which is the one I'm showing you right now, depicts that there could be morning and even afternoon convection well ahead of our dry line, which means that we could actually see a potential for maybe some you know significant tornadoes, but also that might be a short short-lived threat depending on how many storms are out there during the morning and the early afternoon but once again if we don't have any morning convection and things stay very unstable we could definitely have a tornado outbreak on our hands so we definitely need to watch monday very closely so here's what the timing looks like as we go into monday right around lunchtime the hrrr does have plenty of convection firing off pretty prematurely around kansas city even back through parts of north texas and if this does happen again it could limit our late afternoon early evening threat of severe weather but it does still show the 
potential for rotating supercells even during the middle of the afternoon but this is a pretty messy setup these are going to be your high precip supercells that could produce rain wrap tornadoes same thing even back down in arkansas we could have a similar story back down there by around five to six o'clock those storms continue to push east towards areas like st louis and eastern missouri and also towards little rock arkansas but notice by around six o'clock we also got a bunch of supercells that are going to try to fire off across kansas nebraska and as well as oklahoma and if they are this widespread we will have some problems i think with storms being too close to each other and merging it could cause some problems with the overall tornado threat but if they can stay a little bit more discreet than this we definitely could have a really significant tornado threat on our hands initially with these supercells and then by eight to nine o'clock the h triple r has this come becoming a line of thunderstorms which means that we'd be talking about more of a significant wind and hail threat and then still embedded tornadoes in this line which means that we could have a full-blown squall line moving across western missouri and the AR also indicating some discrete supercells back over in central arkansas during the evening hours which could also produce the potential for strong tornadoes and then by around 10 to 11 o'clock that line continues to push east storms remain messy across arkansas but any of these supercells will still be able to rotate in this environment and produce the potential for tornadoes all the way through midnight and perhaps even into the early overnight hours so again a very dangerous day is ahead on tuesday and as we go into tuesday this low pressure system will continue to move to the east where there will be heavy rain across many areas in the midwest on tuesday severe weather will initiate as we go into the mid to late afternoon and evening hours across a large chunk of the ohio valley tennessee valley and the dixie alley where again damaging winds large hail and a few tornadoes are a possibility the good news is is that the storm system will weaken as we go into wednesday as it approaches the east coast so we'll finally have a break from severe weather outbreaks on wednesday and then by thursday into friday high pressure builds across the great plains and i think things will at least be somewhat quieter as we go into the late week and the weekend but we could see a return of more significant severe weather by sometime next week for the last week of may and i think things will continue to stay active even into the first week of june so definitely continue to stay weather aware a busy stretch of weather is still ahead and as always thank you all so much for watching today's forecast if you are new to the channel make sure to subscribe down below we'll be live later today tomorrow and likely tuesday covering the potential for severe weather outbreaks so make sure you are subscribed to the channel and click the bell icon so you're notified with the latest updates and we'll see you guys all again in our live stream later today.